Hello everyone, I'm Gerald Peel, Director of Music at First Cumberland Presbyterian Church, and I will be bringing you the next several devotionals, starting with today, Thursday. Thank you for joining me. I have a question for you. What is a witness? Have you ever been a witness? Have you ever been called to a court of law to testify to something that you may have witnessed? That's a serious obligation and something that we are sometimes afraid of having to go do. But we would be useless witnesses if we had never seen anything. In the world of Christianity, we mostly think of witnessing as specifically sharing something that we believe or know with someone else. And that's not wrong. But it is widely understood that you cannot witness about something that you've never seen or that you have not experienced. If you'll indulge me for a moment, I'd like to talk to you about my family. And that seems self-indulgent, doesn't it? My family uh, arrived in North America, in, in Virginia specifically, in 1620. The young man who came on the ship, Margaret and John from England, was named Lawrence. And our family started in 1620. Therefore, our family has seen the growth of the United States from very early and have been part of this from what you might think is the very beginning. He departed in London and from London on February of that year and he landed in Virginia because the boat was owned by the Virginia Company of London. And he actually got here before the Pilgrims did, later in 1620, in December, I think it was. But I'd like to actually tell you about my grandfather, my dad's dad, who witnessed and experienced changes in his life that are so amazing to all of us in the family. James Denson Peel was born on October 9 of 1895. He was born to a poor family in Montgomery, Alabama, and he had uh, parents who were in their upper middle age. That's how old they were before he was born. He was child number six of seven, and most of his siblings had already grown and had left the home. So after Grandpa finished the third grade, he had to quit school and go to work at a uh, textile mill to help support his parents and his sister who still lived at home. This was a difficult time for many people and, uh, and it was no different for my grandfather as a child laborer. But he lived until he was 95 years old. He drove his car until he was 93. All three of us kids got to know him very well and we're grateful for having been able to do that. And the reason I wanna to talk to you about him is because of his witness. In his long life, he was able to experience many things that the rest of his family, even though they came here in 1620, were not able to experience. Let me just begin. In 1910, Grandpa saw Orville and Wilbur Wright fly their famous biplane into Montgomery, Alabama, where he lived. He described it as absolutely amazing. Montgomery is where the, uh, the Wright brothers began the very first civilian flight school in America. Funny thing, it lasted a total of two months and only had one graduate. Another interesting note is that the place in right outside of Montgomery where that flight school was started is where Maxwell Air Force Base is currently housed. In 1912, Grandpa became a firefighter in the Montgomery Fire Department. At that time, there were no fire trucks. They used a fire wagon that was pulled by horses. We actually have photos of Grandpa with a couple of the horses. And then, after Grandpa came back from World War I, which I'll tell you about in a minute, they acquired an actual fire truck, and so he had his picture taken with that as well. Grandpa was still a firefighter when he came back from the war, and that's what he went to go do, and he was still supporting his family. But as World War I broke out and the United States became involved in it, Grandpa enlisted and became part of an infantry group that was shipped out to Paris by steamship. And when they and when he got there, they had a very they had a very serious difficult time. They were involved in serious battles, and it was a scary time for them. Grandpa got dysentery in 1918 in early November, and he went to Paris 
to be an infirmary to be in an infirmary to overcome the dysentery. He was there on November 11 of 1918. That was the day the armistice was signed and he was well enough to be able to go out with a number of his buddies and go into town and uh, and be part of the excitement in Paris during that time. Grandpa told me later that he had never been kissed by so many women on one day and he'd never been given so many flowers, especially by women. When Grandpa was 39, he met Edna and he married her and he was later in life, they had my father, James Denson Peel Jr., my dad. At that point, Grandpa began his long career with the U.S. Postal Service. In July of 1969, along with millions of other Americans, Grandpa sat down in front of a television and watched the first human being set foot on the face of the moon. That's pretty amazing. And then after that, I sat in Grandpa's living room, and it was uh, January 28th of 1986. And if you'll remember, we sat there together, we watched the Space Shuttle Challenger take off, and then explode in the sky as that disaster happened. What an amazing thing to think, to think that an individual like him could experience so much change from the Wright brothers to the Space Shuttle Challenger, including a fire wagon drawn by horses. What, a, what, what amount of history he was able to see is beyond what anybody else in my family has experienced. Over the next few days that I'm doing these devotionals, I'd like to explore the concept of witnessing and I hope that you'll join me. Hope you have a great Thursday.